Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. Let's go underwater today. I'm thinking of a tranquil still life done in alcohol inks with some seaweed and a couple of seashells. We'll need ink, any brand that makes you happy. I love most of them, so I mix and match a lot. I'm planning on using masking fluid, so I'll need something to spread that with. I'll also need some brushes, some containers for my ink, and since isopropyl alcohol remains hard to find for most people, I'll use Pinata's cleanup solution to thin my inks. Now, if you do have isopropyl alcohol, definitely use that because that'll work just great, as does Pinata's Claro Extender or any blending solution. I've gone ahead and lightly drawn what I'd like to paint. My substrate is my favorite graphics opaque white plastic. I've decided to use a really old bottle of masking fluid that I found in my stash. And to apply it, I'll use this silicone tipped sculpting tool. Dry masking fluid peels off of this in seconds. And the tip lets me make pretty precise lines. But a lot of people use an old paintbrush that they dedicate to masking fluid. If you want to do that, that's fine too. So like I said, this bottle is ancient, possibly older than some of you watching, but since it's still good, I'm using it. Cause you know, waste that one, not. It's got a few little clumps from me cleaning out the dried film that was on the top. But luckily masking fluid doesn't need to be pretty. <laughs> it just needs to be liquid so that you could spread it well before it dries. Now every now and then some will accumulate on the silicone tip that I'm using, so I clean it off before continuing. I'm being most careful along the edges when spreading the fluid, you know, the edges of like the, the seaweed and the shells, and also at any corners where two objects overlap. These are the areas I would have a harder time getting crisp lines if I was to try to wipe away the blue ink that I will be spreading for the ocean later. So the masking fluid is something that I use when I want to have really crisp lines like this. When filling in the middle of any area, I can be less careful. I don't really need to be neat about spreading it. Neatness doesn't count, but coverage does. This is the kind of task where more is more. If I'm not sure if I covered an area, I add a little more. I tilt the piece now and then to help make sure that I've masked everything because I'll be able to see any spots that aren't shiny. And then once everything is done, I will leave it all to dry. It is really important to let this dry completely before going on to paint. With the mask now fully dry, I've used inexpensive clear tape to attach my piece to an acrylic panel. This is going to make it easy for me to move the piece around and it will hopefully give me a nice frame when I peel off the tape. Now I can have at it with my blue ink for the ocean. I'm wetting my entire surface with cleanup solution and then pouring thinned pinata teal and keelty blue on the surface to cover it all. I'm just tilting the piece back and forth to get like a smooth coverage. I'm kind of opting for a fairly uniform blue background so as not to compete with the blades of kelp and the seashells. But you can kind of play around with this and maybe give it more variety in the blues. I kind of opted just to put down a nice blue wash. At first I thought I wanted a very light background, but then I decided on a slightly brighter blue, so I added more ink. The ink, like I said, is still all thinned, however, so that it can flow and spread further. 
I wiped away excess ink I knew I didn't want toward the bottom where the sand will go. And with the tissue, I also soaked up any extra ink that was accumulating along the edges. Now this next step is entirely for convenience. I'm using an X-Acto blade and carefully cutting through the dry masking film between the shells and the seaweed so that I can remove just the parts protecting the seaweed for now. By doing this, I won't have to be too careful about ending my brush strokes onto the shells later when I'm painting in the seaweed, so that's why I'm doing this. But seriously, you can remove the entire mask all at once. And then comes the fun of removing the mask. You can absolutely do it with just your finger, but if you don't want to spread possible oils from your finger onto your painting surface, you can use what's called a finger cot, which is like a little prophylactic for your finger, <laughs> or a glove to get the job done oil free. For my first seaweed color, I chose Kilty Harvest. And I'm working with a small round paintbrush to minimize how much ink I can pick up so that it doesn't kind of get away from me. And I also have a scrap piece of graphics craft plastic on which I can test my colors as I mix them. I use the ink at almost full strength at first for one of the, I think you call them fronds, in seaweed, you don't call them leaves. You think you either call them blades or fronds. So um, I make sure to have all my brush marks go from top to bottom and not left to right because I want the resulting visible brush marks that alcohol ink will kind of create to suggest the texture of the seaweed fronds <laughs> and the middle vein, I guess, of each of the blades or fronds. I've thinned the ink some more for a couple other leaves and then put down a very light wash of that thinned ink just for now. The light color is more of a base that I can build on later. To change colors, I add some pinata lime green to the mix of harvest and cleanup solution, and then I thin that a little bit too. Next, I add more color to the leaves that I want to have be green. I add a little at a time, and then I let it dry, and then I would add a little more. This lets me create texture and control the flow of the ink. As you paint, you'll see how the ink moves and you'll get a feel for how much ink is safe to have on your brush without it blooming when you put it down on the paper. And if you're in doubt, put your first stroke well in the middle, well within the middle of the area that you're about to paint so that if it does want to bloom out, you can catch the ink before it gets to the edge of whatever it is you're painting. I hope that made sense. Allowing the ink on your brush to dry a little lets it get darker and more concentrated, and also it becomes very safe to paint on bloom-free. So this now darker ink on the brush is an awesome way to paint shading. So here I get to accentuate the twists and the turns of the blades of seaweed by putting in that shading. After looking things over, <laughs> I decided I wanted a somewhat bluer looking blade also for more, I don't know, visual interest. So I wiped away the green that I just put down. <laughs> That is one of the beauties of alcohol ink. We have those wipe away and start over options. <laughs> I 
well, you know, if you're careful. <laughs> After removing the green, I added some teal to my ink mix and I got the new color that I wanted. Again, all my brush strokes are following the direction of the blade. I am exploiting alcohol ink's propensity for adding borders to our brush strokes. So those little borders kind of make the sort of blade come to life, if you will. Now you might notice that I've caused this blade to now be in front where before it was behind. That's just temporary and it's gonna get corrected later. And again, before finishing this blade, I come in with a near dry brush to add in some darker shadows. For the next blade, I'm going in with a lighter green and literally just stroking right over the bluer blade. Doing it this way makes it much easier to get good clean overlap lines rather than trying to end each brush stroke right at the edge of the other object that I'm painting like I have to do where the light green blade is meeting the darker green one. There I have to make my brush stroke come to a really clean end. I don't have to do that by just painting right over something. When I go to paint in the more gold or ochre colored blade, I again just paint right over the overlap that it shares with the one that is light green. Alcohol ink being what it is will easily wipe away what was there before and replace it with whatever new color you want to apply. It's just kind of interesting that way. The new color just bullies the old color out of the way. <laughs> on the lower section of this blade, I throw in a little highlight on the right to suggest that there's a bit of that that's turning toward us. And then I add some shading where I think it will help enhance everything and add some deeper color to our last frond or blade. Now on to our seashells. I rub off just the mask on the scallop shell for now. Now, when I was putting down the masking fluid off camera, I had added a little extra masking fluid over the area that'll be the sand later. And I left a gap between that new masking fluid that I added and the original masking fluid that I painted over the seaweed and uh, seashells. Um, so that little gap between those two uh, applications is what caused that blue line. And I've just decided to remove it, um, all the this, this stuff over the sand because I'm not gonna be painting so much that I have to worry about how much ink gets into the sand area. I'm going for a mauve-like color for the scallop shell. So I mixed a tiny bit of thin down pinata pink to just a little bit of kilty gray. And that gives me the color. I switch over to a filbert paintbrush because a filbert has a rounded shape and it's just perfect for getting the scalloped edge of the shell. The scrap piece of graphics is now doubling as a palette. When I only need a tiny bit of color, what I do sometimes is just drop a drop of the ink that I need onto a scrap piece and then I can pick it up from there with my paintbrush. So here I want a somewhat grayer ink for a quick way to add ridges to the scallop. Now let's tackle the spiral shell. For this one I decided to use Prismacolor colored pencils to put in the texture. 
and to bring out the tubular or rounded feeling of the shell. Oh, and I also quickly added a little bit more masking fluid um, on the corner of the last shell just for convenience. And then I went back to my little pencil work. I love that this plastic has enough tooth to accept colored pencils because pencils are a really good way to add little extra details that might be a little challenging to do with ink. So I kind of like having this sort of a little mixed media <laughs> option, if you will. <laughs> so I'm darkening along the main line of the spiral and then adding curved lines that are sort of spreading out from that main spiral line. It's kind of fun to see the shape of the shell coming to life. And then on top of the pencil, I'm adding a very light wash of pinata pink mixed with a little marabou vanilla. The inks can go over the pencil just fine. But keep in mind that if you brush at the pencil strokes a lot, they will dissolve a bit and they'll become lighter than what you'd put down. This can be useful if you end up not wanting your pencil marks to be as dark as they had been. But if you want to maintain the intensity of their color, don't brush too often over them with alcohol ink because it'll kind of like melt it in a way. <laughs> Before starting the last shell, the cockle shell, I did a little house cleaning with a micro brush. Then I started working with a couple of brown colored pencils. There were a lot of little details I wanted to add to this shell, so the pencils definitely helped. The dark brown was great for the ridges on the very edge of the shell, and then the lighter brown helped for the others. I drew in a pattern for the shell using both shades of pencil and thought about what color of ink to use. I decided on Marabou's Caramel. I added a little to the leftover ink from the spiral shell, so it's, there's still a hint of pink to it. And then I tested out the color on my scrap piece of graphics and painted the outer shell with it. Next, I thinned that ink quite a bit with cleanup solution to use it for the inner shell because I didn't want the inner shell to be stark white. Even if in nature it probably would be pretty white, I think it would be too glaring in this painting and it would also look like I forgot to paint that area or something. So a quick wash of the very light color, a little accenting of the inner ridges, a little extra wash to bump up the color, and I think we're done. At this point, <laughs> the scallop shell was looking a little sloppy to me now. <laughs> I could have wiped it away and started again, but instead, I opted for my trusty, dull X-Acto blade, which I like using as a scratching tool. If you've got a scratch art tool, that works great too. So what I did was I very lightly scratched at the color that I laid down, that mauve color, until I liked it better. So I scratched away some of the dark spots and you know, just kind of reshaped everything a little bit. And now I really loved that this shell pops in color, even though it's the simplest of the three. We are at the finish line now, and the easiest element to paint is all we've got to do, the sand. For that, I added more Marabou Caramel ink to my little cup. I specifically chose Marabou ink for this 
because it tends to form more borders, I think, than other inks, which will be perfect for giving the sand some texture. So for this part of the painting, I just brushed back and forth as that ink mixture started to dry. I coaxed it up between the shells a little bit and up to the shells as much as needed. And I basically played with the wet ink until I liked the overall look and then I let it dry and do its thing. My finishing touch was to add a couple of small shadows cast by the shells. And then I was a very happy camper. <laughs> Let's pull off the tape and see how this turned out. This is always a wonderfully satisfying step. Well, if it works. <laughs> but honestly, it usually does. Because it's really hard for the tape to fail you. And even if it did, it's really easy to clean up any leaks. Especially on graphics. It just wipes back down to the white so easily. I am super excited to hear your thoughts on this. Tell me which is your favorite shell. What colors would you have picked when painting them? Tell me in the comments what you think. This piece can ultimately be the starting point for a more involved painting, if you like. If you really get inspired, you can give your painting a more underwater look, by adding some distant fish or jellyfish, maybe bubbles, rays of sunlight coming through the water. Let me know what you would add. I hope you're inspired to go paint. Links for everything you need are in the description box below the video. Let your creative nature shine this week. Thank you for spending time with me. May you and yours be healthy and safe. See you soon. Bye now.